topic is wave guide coupling. Okay, wave guide, uh, wave guide coupling. Coupling means here what we are doing, we are coupling two or more wave guide components so that we can transfer the energy in or out of the component. So suppose if you are having this one wave guide, in that I am connecting some other component. I don't know about this component. So that you are knowing that in your wave guide you are having the electric field and magnetic field. It is flowing. So from that, either I can take a part of that energy or from this coupling component I can insert some energy in this wave guide. Okay. So if that is my activity, then I will go for the coupling. So suppose if we are going for the wave guide coupling, we are generally having the three different types of wave guide coupling. First one is the probe coupling. If we are going for the probe coupling here, the probe coupling, we are coupling the wave guide with respect to your coaxial line. So this is your coaxial cable and this is your inner part of your coaxial cable. This is your inner part of your coaxial cable. If you are seeing this coaxial cable, it is metallic in nature and we can use this probe for transmitting the energy in the wave guide. So equal distribution of the energy will be there from this probe to this wave guide. So we can say that this probe can act as antenna. Now, if we are seeing this probe, here because if we are assuming this as a wave guide, so when whenever we are going for inserting the probe, we will insert the probe in the wider side. This is the wider side. Okay. Here we have to insert. Here we don't have to insert. Okay. So where you are having the length, the place where you are having the length, there we have to insert the probe, not this side. And whenever we are going for inserting at your length, it should be at a distance of your lambda g by 4. This distance this distance should be your lambda g by 4. What is your lambda g? So, if you are having this waveguide, in that waveguide, what is the guide wavelength? First, you have to calculate the guide wavelength for that waveguide. Okay. And then you can calculate that at what distance you have to insert the probe. Okay. And whenever we are going for inserting, we have to insert it at the center. Okay. First, we are having the wider side and at the wider side, we have to insert it in the center. Okay. So, when we are inserting it in the center and it is at a distance of the lambda d by 4, then this will perform well. So, here what is happening that earlier if we are not following this, there may be the chances of mismatching. And if there is mismatching is there between these two components, then some energy may escape from this. So this is not required. I think this is not required. We want that there should be proper matching. In order to have the proper matching, we have to make it at a distance of the lambda d by 4. It should be at the wider side and it should be at the center. And see suppose if we are seeing your probe, this probe is parallel to your electric field. The electric field will be concentrated at the center. Here you will not have that much electric field. You will have the electric field at the center and the center will be concentrated. So as the electric field is concentrated at the center, we are inserting the probe here. And as it is parallel to this, your probe coupling, it is also known as capacitive coupling. Okay, so here what we are doing? Here if we are going for the aperture coupling, this is also one way of coupling between two different components. Here what we are having? The coupling. Here we are having two different waveguides having different physical dimensions. So different waveguide, so two waveguides having different dimension, we are coupling it. You are knowing that in case of your waveguide, you are having the energy in the form of electric field and magnetic field. Now, suppose if we are inserting some hole. So, when, whenever we are inserting some hole in the waveguide, then some of the energy will escape from this hole. So, as some of the energy will escape from 
from this hole, the electric field and magnetic field there will be a there will be disturbance in that. So you will have uneven distribution of your electric and magnetic field. The place where you are having the more electric field, uh, the place where you are having the more magnetic field, that side you will see the transfer penalty is taking place. So here, what we are doing by inserting the hole, we are disturbing the balance, and as we are as we are inserting the hole, some of the energy is escaping from this hole, and as some of the energy is escaping, whatever the distribution of the energy is there, that is imbalance. So of your aperture coupling. Aperture coupling is also known as it is also known as slot coupling. Okay. Loop coupling. Say suppose whenever we are going for the loop coupling, it is the coupling between your cavity insulator and your coaxial line. So if you are seeing your probe coupling, there we are having waveguide and coaxial line. Here we are having cavity insulator and your coaxial line. So what is the difference between your that waveguide and this cavity insulator? Whereas your cavity insulator, it is a finite length. Okay. So this block it is showing that it is of a finite length. Or in other words, we can say that from a waveguide we can take a part of the waveguide and we form the cavity resonator. When we are going for the coupling here, here we are having a something like this loop. Loop means this is a probe only, that, but we have made it in such a way that it is making a loop. And we are making the loop in such a way that it is a magnetic field. Topic is a prototype. What you are having? We are seeing that what is the degree of coupling? The area of the loop. Larger the area, greater the degree of coupling. And also known as your inductive coupling. So here capacitive coupling, your inductive coupling. Okay. Magnetic field. On the other hand, when we are going for the probe coupling, there we are focusing on the electric field. So both are corollary to one another. And today's topic is waveguide attenuator. Okay. So waveguide attenuator it is one uh, microwave component. What do you understand by attenuator? Sometimes what happens that for perfectly matching, if we are having some microwave component, if we want to join some other component, so for perfectly matching, the requirement is that that whatever the microwave power is, the total microwave power should be absorbed and there should not be any reflection. And Whatever this activity is, this activity should be insensitive of frequency. So, irrespective of type of frequency, it should perform that activity. Means to absorb the total power and not to reflect any microwave power. So, if that is our requirement, then we'll go for your microwave, then we'll go for your waveguide attenuator. So, that is the basic principle of your waveguide attenuator. Types of attenuator. Attenuator will be of two types. Either it will be your fixed attenuator or second one is your variable attenuator. The name itself it is telling that in fixed attenuator you are having the attenuation whose value is fixed. Whereas in case of your variable attenuator, you are having the attenuator whose attenuation can be varied. Now, if we are going for your variable attenuator, variable attenuator can further be of two types. It may be either continuous or it may be in terms of step. So, continuous you are knowing that if you are considering the signal, Continuous signal, analog in nature. So, your continuous variable attenuator will also be analog in nature. It will be continuous. 
so attenuation will be continuous on the discrete signal as you are having the discrete signal like that the attenuation will be discrete in nature okay if you are seeing that this is one wave line type having the dimension k and b and there you are having the dielectric slab so suppose if you are going for the dielectric uh, dielectric it is your glass slab and you are having the coating of uh, carbon plate film so you are having a glass slab with carbon coating on it if you are seeing the another view of your attenuator fixed attenuator here if you are seeing that you are having the dimension of 3 lambda g by 2 so upper part you are having 3 lambda g by 2 and below here you are having 2 lambda g so what is this your lambda g so whenever we are going for designing your fixed attenuator we should know that what should be the dimension of your dielectric slab so here first we will calculate that what is the guide wave length of that wave guide so if we are knowing the guide wave length then we can go for designing of your dielectric slab here you have to keep the lambda g by 2 and below we have to keep 2 lambda g so we can have slab type variable attenuator and we can have wave type variable attenuator so the variable attenuator that we are having in case of your rectangular wave guide are slab type and wave type let us see what is slab type and wave type are we we are seeing how your slab type attenuator is so see this is your slab type attenuator here you are having the maximum attenuation you see the position of your dielectric slab this is the maximum attenuation and this it is showing the minimum attenuation if we are seeing the position of your this dielectric we can make the dielectric to move in the vertical direction okay so when it is completely inserted in your wave guide we will say that you are having the maximum attenuation so the degree of attenuation depends upon how much the dielectric slab is inserted in your wave guide so this is your wave type attenuator if you are seeing the wave type attenuator you are having this dielectric slab dielectric slab is at the center so when the dielectric slab is at the center during that time you will have the maximum attenuation now here we are having the position that we can drag it in your horizontal direction when we are pulling it complete to the edge there you will have the minimum attenuation so you will have the minimum attenuation when you are completely dragging it in horizontal direction so this is your wave type attenuator here what is happening that if you are considering both you are getting the maximum attenuation when your dielectric is at the center you are getting the maximum attenuation when the dielectric is at the center because you are knowing that the electric field is concentrated at the center at the center you will have the maximum electric field and as we are moving towards the edge the density of the electric field goes on decreasing so because of that only we will have the 